Hi everyone. This is going to be the first video that I have talking about indexing tools and this particular one is what's called a horizontal vertical collet indexer. Uh, now it's obviously called that because you can mount it horizontally or vertically like this. It uses 5C collets which are very readily available and of course you're going to find those in almost every machine shop out there. Uh, it's actuated using a lever collet closer. You tighten up the collet using this nut and once you get the tension set it's just a matter of moving this lever and it makes for very fast part changes. You can also remove this knurled ring and you've got a threaded spindle and this happens to have the same spindle thread as my lathe which is two and a quarter eight. The piece I'm machining is actually an inch and five eighths in diameter so I'm going to actually put a chuck on there and I'm going to use it that way. This indexer uses what's called direct indexing and this is going to be a very common way of indexing on most tools. You can see right in here there's a ring of holes and there's 24 holes. What that means is you can get any factor of 24 for your numbers of divisions. So you can divide your part into 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, or 24 divisions using just these holes. What sets this indexer apart is that these holes are actually threaded. So you can plug the holes that you don't want to use with the set screw that's inside them. And the ones that you do want to use, you just pull the set screw all the way back those will be the only holes that the indexing pin drops into. The great thing about that is once you have these screws set up, it's basically foolproof indexing. Uh, there's no way you can screw it up. It's only going to drop into those holes. So you have this ratcheting handle here, and this actually also activates the indexing pin. So you push it in, and then you just move to the next index. The pin drops in and then you can crank back and do it all over again and it's only going to drop into the holes that are unplugged. I've seen some versions of this that have a separate handle for the indexing pin. I've, uh, I've used them both and they both seem to work equally well. Now, Of course there are cheap versions and expensive versions. Uh, this happens to be one of the Chinese knockoffs and at the time of this video, those ranged in price from around 180 US dollars up to maybe 250 US dollars, maybe a bit more. Of course, the name brand ones are quite a lot more expensive than that. Like I said before, I'm going to be using this in the vertical position, so I have a hold down slot there and another one in the base here. So I'm going to have to put this down over a stud and have my nut already in there. Once I get it set up and the chuck on, uh, all I need to do is find the center of the piece that I'm going to be machining and move over the appropriate amount and then I'm ready to go. So I said this is going to be the first of a series of videos on indexing, but I didn't really talk about what indexing is. Basically it's the ability to rotate your part without tearing down your setup and rotate it a predictable amount. Now in this case I'm going to be doing it on the face, but I could easily be doing it on the diameter of the part. With this particular device, like I said earlier in the video, it'll only do a certain number of divisions. In this case, it's got 24 holes on the back side down there, so it will only do factors of 24. So again, that's 2, 3, 4, 6, 8, 12, and 24. That means that wouldn't necessarily be very good for cutting gears, but the vast majority of the time when you're indexing something, you just want to put two wrench flats or six wrench flats or features that are 90 degrees from each other. So a direct indexer like this actually does the vast majority of the indexing that you might want to do. For doing things like cutting gears or splines or graduated dials or more complex divisions, that's the realm of the dividing head and that's going to be covered in a future video. What I'm going to do on this piece is drill and tap six holes on the face of this part. And I've got the other one that I'm making already done. Um, since I know that some of you are going to ask what it is that I'm making, uh, this is a pretty cool project. I've got a friend that makes very large RC planes, like 10 foot wingspans. And this is the adapter to go from a small gas engine out of a steel leaf blower to his propeller. One thing about this particular setup is I do not have a ton of daylight between the spindle and my part. In fact, my table is as far down as it could possibly go. And I don't have a riser block on my mill, 
so I'm having to get a little bit creative as far as my tooling. So I'm using an end mill holder to hold a center drill and I'm going to use this to spot drill and countersink the holes. Then I have my smallest drill chuck on a straight shank just held on a collet. Uh, this is a Jacobs number zero. It only goes up to 5 30 seconds of an inch which is why I'm not holding this center drill in there because it doesn't fit. I'll be using the drill chuck for both the tap drill as well as the tap. I've also had to modify the tap a bit so that I could hold it in the drill chuck. It's a spiral point tap and since that chuck's not very large I had to grind off most of the square so this is never going to actually be usable as a hand tap anymore uh, but it's still perfectly usable in the machine. I have just the right amount of daylight to get my tooling in there without having to move my table, which is pretty awesome. I hate having to move my table back and forth if I don't need to. That's just how fast it is. And again, since I've got those set screws on the underside there, it will only drop into those six locations. You can do that any way you want. If you just need a hole here and another hole there, you can just have those two holes unblocked. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch to the drill and drill all of them, re-indexing around, and then I'll switch to the tap. I'll speed this part up since you probably don't want to watch it in real time. That's why you should be careful around rotating equipment right there. Just imagine if that was a piece of jewelry or a piece of clothing. There we are, six holes drilled and tapped. I hope this was an eye-opening video on this indexer because it really is a very versatile tool. And like I said, it can do the vast majority of the most common indexings that you're going to need to do. The fact that you use 5C collets, you can use collet stops, you've got the lever changer, you've got the basically foolproof indexing because of the screws, uh, you've got the flexibility of using a chuck this makes it one of the most versatile indexers that you can use in the shop, especially if all you're making are hexes or bolt hole circles that fit within those parameters. 
it's a great tool to have that fits in in the home shop as well as a production shop. If you like this video, please consider liking and subscribing down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.